you see a lot of um, on biodegradable products like uh, plastic. plastic, like uh, pure water, all those kind of stuff. They are not renewable, and it means that they continue. In fact, that is one of the major causes of flood in, in Lagos today. So when you explain it to the children and they understand it, the next time they see an adult throw pure water on the ground, what would they do? They will understand that they need to correct that habit. There are many things that children, and you know sometimes when a child tells you something, even if you use what we call bracado or koju, you still know that ah, I shouldn't have let myself to this level when the child is not the one correcting me. So you can use the code for that one. The next time, you won't do it again. That's, that's number one. Number two, if you go to some other countries, they have seen that these uh, nylons and plastic materials, they begin to have negative impacts on marine lives. So you will see fish swallowing remnants of those things. That's a big problem. It's a big problem because ultimately, we too are going to eat that fish. You see what we are doing to ourselves. That is why it's important for us to make that education as quickly as we can. You know, but there is the exciting art of it, which is where I come in as an educator. We already have developed habits. And those habits, they don't die fast. So what can we do to be able to make things different? If you enter my, my learning space today, I have one lovely chandelier. That lovely chandelier, I call it um, patience. And people, you know, you, you know, we talk about it all the time. And they say, why do you name it patient? I say, oh, because I have 3,000, 3,000 black and yellow nylon bags twisted together to create that chandelier. And it looks really nice. And of course, the building is very nice. And putting that there is like, I am glorifying trash, but in a lovely way. And then people then say, wow, if you can turn this into something beautiful, then we better start thinking about it. If you go to the museum in our university, more than half of things that have been exhibited are made out of supposed waste. So we are turning waste into creative products. That's what it adds them. Then we do competitions for entrepreneurs, startups, to be able to see what can we do with this waste. I have seen even people making blocks out of those waste, out of the nylon bags and everything. They make waste that, I mean they make blocks and they use those blocks as paving stones. I have seen some, they converted them into electric poles and they use it for electricity within their compounds. I have seen one of the ladies that won um, the Creative Cup for Africa came with one of our students, used um, water hyacinth, converted it into raw materials for making clothes. All kinds of creativity. And so, yes, these things are there. They are in good trouble for us, but they are converting them into useful products. Just very recently, uh, under the work we do with Lagos State, uh, Science and Research Council, uh, SAGASO, that is uh, well seen along the Badagri coast area, disturbs the life of the marine there. They have been able to harvest them and convert them into feeds for fish and, and for uh, other livestock, of course, through a process. So there is usually nothing that is a waste that is true waste. But true knowledge, we can convert that 
Uh, if you go to uh, Republic of Benin, uh, there is there is a reverend gentleman there, uh, Father Zamje. He's a Nigerian, but he's, he's there. He started out there, and he's doing wonders with waste. He tells me that there is nothing that comes out of that place that is a waste. Waste in one area becomes an input into another area. When you teach, when you educate the child from the beginning, the child will have that mindset that everything that we consider as a waste, how can we turn it into an input to another process? It's about mindset change. And we have the role as educators to change that mindset. I hope that beyond what you are going to learn in the next few days, that you will also take personal interest in sustainable development because you will be able to see how you can impact your own students, children, who has been given to you by design. Sometimes we think that these things happen. No. There is a rule that you must play. And I'm somebody that believes very seriously that on the last day, God is going to ask you, what did you do with those children? So the time is now. Please, let's help ourselves so that we can help our children. This work belongs to all of us. And we, as educators, we have a major role to play. I thank you for listening.